Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, you get to see five of our most popular weapons tested by the five finalists who are competing to take my job as host of Weapons Wednesday. But before we begin, if you just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. So last week, I showed you guys some of the newest weapons we recently added to the KarateMart.com website. And then I asked you to go to the Community tab and vote for which one you liked best. And you guys went to the Community tab and voted for the Modern Tactical Copus Sword. Excellent choice, guys. I love how this is a well-made, modern version of a very popular historic sword. So awesome job. So this week is going to be so much fun. Each of our five finalists have been sent one of my favorite weapons for them to review and test out. So at the end of this video, I need you to go to the community tab and vote for which one you like best because next week, the winner of today's vote is going to become the new host of Weapons Wednesday. So without further ado, let's move on to our very first weapon. All right, so our very first weapon is... The Skull Crusher Sword Cane, which is hosted by Sifu Rick B. Let's go ahead and watch his video. Hey guys, it's Sifu Rick, and my friends at Karate Mart have sent me something to show you guys. Now, this thing is completely, completely amazing. Now, before we get into the review, I need you to go like this video, subscribe to this channel, do all of those things. That would be awesome. All right, a while back, I did a video and it like took off, which was what would be your zombie apocalypse weapon of choice? Well, I think Karate Might heard me and they sent me this weapon. This is the Skull Crusher Sword Cane. You heard that right, Sword Cane. There is a hidden sword inside this cane. Now, we need to get into this and check it out. The overall weight of this cane is three pounds, 12 ounces, but most of the weight is up here in the Warhammer head. The handle, the Warhammer head, is cast from stainless steel with a black finish, so it will be very corrosion resistant. Overall length is 37 inches long, but it can be shortened by cutting down the shaft and reattaching the toe. The shaft is made from a fiberglass reinforced nylon, which is extremely durable. Grip lines along the shaft towards the handle for added control. Oh, but this Skull Crusher sword cane has a secret. It has a hidden sword inside its shaft. The hidden sword is made from SK5 hardened steel with the black finish. It also has some serrations right here at the end. Now, it has a compression fitting that's very secure on here. So it's not gonna just fly out pretty easily if I'm going to use this as a war hammer, but it does make it release pretty easy. And as always, please check your local laws because some states have very strict laws about sword canes. Now let's go outside so we can really test this out. So I'm gonna do a couple of tests. I'm going to do an impact test on the pumpkin. I'm also going to do another test with the sword slashing the pumpkin. That's why I've got the second one back there. And then because of this stainless steel head, we are going to bust a brick. So you're ready. Here we go. Let me go get that. Check out the damage that it did on there. So let's try the other side. There's no nothing, just pumpkin meat on it. So let's try the spike side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, something I want to note on all of those impacts, the head stayed fully secure inside so the sword is safe for full impact so let's try another one but this time with the sword so if i just easy in there that was a slight oh wow
easy little push that went in probably a good three, four inches. Now a slice, nice little cut. Let's try this way. The handle doesn't get in my hand at all. I've got a nice grip on this side. Let's put it back together. Now, one more monster crush. <laughs> now, as I stated before, this war hammer head is cast from stainless steel. Because of that, I'm gonna test it right up against this cinder block. Gotta have your eye pro on, so ready? No damage whatsoever to this head. This thing is awesome. So if you would like your own Skull Crusher sword cane, go to KarateMart.com today. For now, go down into the comments and tell me what you think would be your zombie apocalypse weapon of choice. I'm thinking I'm switching over to my Skull Crusher sword cane. Keep training and then do it again. So if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, I need you to do a big favor for me. I need you to go over to Karate Mark's YouTube channel. Tell Kyle and Amanda that you want to see me, Sifu Rick B, as the new host of Weapons Wednesday. See you soon. That was really awesome. Great job, Sifu Rick. So that brings us to the second weapon of the day, which is the removable spike aluminum tonfa, which is being reviewed by Eduardo Lagares. So let's go ahead and watch his video. What's up guys, Eddie Lagares here and welcome to round two of becoming host for Weapon Wednesdays for Karate Mart. All right, so for round two, you guys know that I was sent a random weapon uh, for me to use and showcase. And I'm happy that it got to be the Tonfas because it's a weapon that I have uh, used here and there very briefly. And when I did use them, they were wooden. Uh, but what's special about these is that they are pure aluminum. It just really looks nice. The handle is solid aluminum for a good grip. And then the rest of the body is hollowed out. So it's, it's a quick strike kind of thing. Another cool thing about these tonfas is that they bring spikes. You can have a spike here or a spike here, but you can really feel how heavy these are. So once that spike is on, you can definitely feel the weight distribution, uh, the difference in it. You have to really swing hard. Obviously you gotta be careful. Uh, these spikes are no joke. The reason they were engineered uh, to be solid steel is because if it was aluminum, if you were to strike something, uh, it would dwindle down. So it was very smart of them to do solid steel. Something that I really like about the Tonfas is that not only are they a dynamic weapon, but if you really know how to use them, you can use them to your advantage. So you can, you can strike, right? You can block, right? Or you can also strike with this part, right? But what's really cool is that if you're a seasoned martial artist, not only does it become a hammer, but you can use it to trip your opponent in some sort of way um, or cause heavy damage. So you can block, trip him with the ankles by uh, uh, using this as a hook, right? And just kind of pulling. For someone who's been doing martial arts for more than uh, 20 years, uh, I gotta say, as soon as I held them, they just felt natural in my hand. And that's what's really nice about them. This part, it's, this side is fatter than this one. So it gradually goes thinner and thinner which I like. It gives not only a dynamic feel to it, these are really cool weapons to kind of like use, especially if you're the kind of martial artist uh, or weapon expert that likes to do duel. When I use my nunchucks, for example, I like to uh, practice with my left because I'm a righty. But if I practice with my left, it helps me become more dynamic. So these kind of weapons kind of help train that. Um, so the reason they're so high quality is because they're made in the US by Combative and 
Uh, I gotta say, they went all out. This is what it looks like with the spikes. Very nice, very smooth. Let me see how close I can get it. But it's extremely, it's extremely sharp. Um, they went all out when it came to the tip. This is a Tampa with just a cap. It's still very elegant and still worthy of causing a lot of damage. With the spikes, right? It's obviously longer, 22 inches. Without the spikes is uh, 20 inches. It is worth noting that um, the spikes do add uh, some weight to it. So without the spikes, it's about a pound and 13 ounces. And then with the spikes, it's about two pounds and four ounces. Uh, <laughs> if you really try it, you can throw these at people. Solid steel, aluminum, you guys get the point. And before I forget, it also brings this really cool heavy duty nylon bag uh, for the spikes and the caps. If you put it on a belt, just kind of take it out and fix your tonfas. All right, so now that I've showcased the tonfas and uh, all the nice little features that it has, um, now it's time for the really fun part, which is breaking watermelon. And since we're in October, why not break some pumpkin while we're at it? All right, so I got a really nice pumpkin here. Uh, not really sure how much it weighs, but it's pretty heavy. We're gonna see the damage that we can cause. This is gonna be without the spikes, and then we'll, we'll do it with the spike. That way we can see the difference. I guess I, I, guess I added the right swing momentum to it because almost immediately, um, I guess it was from this side, it cracked open. You can see it here. Uh, so that's some, some that's some significant heavy damage right there. I guess with the way that I swung, I mean, this, this could give a really strong crack to a skull or uh, a bone if you really tried. Uh, so I'm very impressed with that, especially since, since this is a pumpkin and not a watermelon. <laughs> so um, now let's try with the spike. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's breaking, it's going through. Um, it goes through smoothly. Um, that's the important part. <laughs> I mean, it's it just it's cracking it open. Um, I like I, I like it. I like the way it feels. The ultimate finisher. We've had our fun with destroying this pumpkin. And you can see that it's it's caused some serious damage. Uh, but aside from that, thank God it's just a pumpkin. Nobody got hurt. And let's just keep breaking pumpkins and watermelons and see how much uh, footage we can get. to do a warm on.
All right, guys, so that concludes round two to see if I have what it takes to be the host of Weapon Wednesdays. And I don't know about you, but I am covered in watermelon, pumpkin. Um, these weapons are really fun to use, uh, very dynamic, very light. Uh, they did not give me trouble whatsoever. Um, however, I do gotta say that uh, the handling does change when you put the spikes, so you gotta be really careful. Um, but other than that, really great weapons. They feel amazing. Also, remember, you guys, I am a trained professional, so please do not attempt any of these uh, things at home. This was strictly for your entertainment purposes only and educational purposes. Also, if you do wanna see me as the next host for Karate Mart, uh, please make sure you go on the website, on the community page, and vote for me. It will be much appreciated, and I promise uh, I am taking all the feedback that you guys give me and trying my best to put it in, uh, in the videos. Uh, for your satisfaction. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Whew, I am sweaty. Just gonna, no, really, really good water modes. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're gonna need two for that one. Awesome job, Eduardo. Now remember, at the end of this video, after you've seen all the competitors, make sure you guys go to the community tab and vote for which host you like best because it's very important that we find the right person to take over my job. But that brings us to our third weapon of the day, which is the Modern Viking Sax Sword, which is reviewed by Styles Johnson. So let's go ahead and check out his video. Just wanted to say good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, hope all is well with everyone. Just wanted to thank everyone who took the time to watch my video at Karate Mart and took the time to get me here to round two. Much appreciated and as much love right back at you. Today, I'll be presenting the modern Viking Sack Sword. As you can see, it has a nice black leather sheath, very well, very thick and sturdy to keep the sword intact. It also has a black holder with holes in it in case you want to get rope or string to attach it to your waist. Also has three buttons around it to keep it sealed. It also has a button latch to keep it protected from coming out. As I pull out the knife, so that sword has a black thermatic plastic around it to grip the handle, which is great. This sword is full tang. It has a very, very thickness to it that I like also made D12 type steel, approximately 25 inches with a length 19 inches. It weighs one pound, nine ounces. As you can see, this sword has a nice length to it. Very nice, cutting down. And you could tell by the definition of it, they took their time making this. It also has four holes in it, which is good as well too. But uh, that's it for the sword. So, you can now start chopping. I got a watermelon and pineapple here. I'll be cutting, cutting them both. I'm gonna cut from the side on this watermelon. That came off very nice. The top came off very nice. I'll be coming down on the pineapple. Not bad at all. Didn't damage the sword. Outside of some juices on it, which is normal. But if I have a sword like this, I will have no fear going into battle with because it's very length to it. Cut. And has a nice, nice touch grip to it. So you can grip it and hold it. Switch either hand, it's still gonna be good. So if I'm in the wilderness, I'm definitely gonna want this sword to battle with, to go against either being people or animals. But the disadvantage of this sword, you might not want a sword this big. You might want something smaller, you know? You might not want a sword this thick. But if, if it's me personally, I would take this sword to battle any day and any time. And I like that it has a nice length to it. I'm not the most tallest guy, but as an average height guy, I'm going against somebody tall, I could possibly reach up to stab him. Or slice them. And that extra length to it can help me reach that. Them being bigger. But uh that's the modern Viking sack sword. And uh 
Thank you, Paul, for getting me to the second round. Much love. I must appreciate it. Post. Well done, Styles. I'm so curious to see which host you guys vote for. So that brings us to the fourth weapon of the day, which is the Hand Forged Chinese Pudao, which is reviewed by DJ Moore or the Modern Ninja. This is going to be fun to see, so let's go ahead and check out his video. Known as the horse cutter, this is one of those weapons that you would see in movies and video games, maybe even read about in textbooks, and you would absolutely love to own in real life, but you'd never actually find a way to buy it. Well, the great people at Karate Mark are doing their part to help change that, because in this episode of Weapon Logs, we're going to test out this awesome Pudao and show if it's actually worth all the hype. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat, and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. If you're anything like me, then you have no idea what a Pudao is, and you're only halfway sure on how to spell it. But that name Horse Cutter really has piqued your interest. And who could blame you? That is an absolutely wild thought. Well, the Pudao, also known as the Podao, is a Chinese glaive with a cleaving blade that resembles the broadsword. It originated during the Song Dynasty, sometime between 960 and 1270. AD. Just like many other weapons of the time, it was a farming tool turned weapon, largely not considered to be a military grade weapon and used by small militias, bandits, and outlaws, and even rebels at the time. However, that definitely changed when the Chinese military realized what these had the ability to actually do, which is obviously how it got the name Horse Cutter. I may pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to do my best. General Yu Fei pioneered using them to chop off the legs of heavily armored horses in battle. This made his men quite a problem for any attacking army of the time. After taking out the horse, they were able to use the hook on the back of the blade to use it and maneuver their opponents into the prime position to use this two-foot business end to, well dispatch the enemy. I really love the history behind this weapon, which is why I think the design choice they went for is perfect. At 53 inches and just over five pounds, it definitely looks and feels like you could do some serious damage when holding and wielding this weapon. Even when just practicing with the weapon and never using it before, I could feel the absolute devastation this weapon could bring in the hands of an actual practitioner or trained warrior. And in my opinion, the unfinished and burnt wood handle and the charcoal finish on the blade makes it really stand out and look at like an ancient weapon to match its history. Don't get me wrong, the modern ninja obviously loves modern looking weapons, but who doesn't enjoy an ancient treasure like this one every now and then? Like it would look absolutely perfect mounted on the wall of any martial arts school or any training basement out there. But don't think it's merely a decorative weapon. Of course it's going to be a full tang blade. For those that don't know, this just means that the blade metal extends throughout the handle that will keep it uh, much stronger and keep the blade from popping off the handle when you're in the midst of combat. Obviously, that wouldn't be the best in a combat situation, but it's also made out of 1045 carbon steel, and I realize that not everyone is quite the weapon and metal nut that I might be, so the long and short of that is that the blade has a couple different things. One, it's high strength and toughness, making it take impacts quite well. Like I dropped it multiple times in the making of this video on concrete, and this basically no dings or scratches. It's fairly easily sharpened by either over-the-counter sharpening tools or even if you really want to do it by your hand if you know what you're doing. This means that in that theoretical zombie apocalypse it will be easy to keep your zombie beheading tool uh, sharp and good for use. And the metal can also be easily weldable. This means you can add in any flare or special designs if there's any welder that wants to do a DIY project with this device. Now if you can't tell I really do like this weapon. I've been excited to play Fruit Ninja with it since I opened the box they shipped it to me with, but there's some things I would have done differently. The black nylon grip is really nice choice design-wise. It's using the Tsukamaki style of wrap that many historical katanas use as well, covering three separate portions of the handle, the top, the middle, and the base, along with the ring at the bottom of the handle as well. However, if you plan on using this actively, the grip is definitely not the most secure thing in the world. After just a couple minutes of testing it and spinning it around, the wrap started to un do itself in my hands and obviously for a decoration piece that doesn't really matter so there's not much to worry about but if you do plan on training with it at all 
you're gonna want to make sure you either re-glue and um, secure all the wraps that it comes with or just re-wrap it with whatever wrap you typically prefer. Because the last thing I want is for my weapon grip to fail me when I'm wielding such a heavy and dangerous weapon. That's a great way to lose a couple toes and I'm not trying to do that. The guard is also a little tight around the hand as well. It's honestly not really that big of an issue for me, but I have noticed that some of my martial arts friends with slightly bigger hands have the issue of being slightly encumbered and uh, limited by the rotation of the weapon. However, with all these drawbacks, I still love this guy and plan to do plenty of practice with it. It, but definitely with the sheath on. The imitation leather does a great job at both protecting the blade and protecting the mats of the school that I teach at. And to truly eliminate some of the bias I may have, let's talk to some of the martial artists in the community. This is a fascinating pudao. It's a little bit different than either the pudao or dadao that I use, but I definitely like it. I like the longer handle. I will say overall, um, some of the, uh, when we're using it, it's, it's kind of easy to come unraveled here, but that's a small thing and an easy thing to fix. Uh, or the balance, the weight, and the fact that it actually works. So, I like it. I'm Elise, and I'm one of Coach DJ's students. Now, when I was working with this, one thing that I did notice that I find super cool is that you could do some damage with the leather on or with the blade out. You could, whew, you can definitely do some uh, gruesome things with this. I really do like this weapon. I like the balance of it. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit heavier towards the weapon side, but that gives it the counterbalance that one might need for taking out the horse with these legs. And I love that the, the weapon feels heavy enough and sturdy enough that I can do that. Now I know what you came here to see. You want to see me absolutely obliterate some fruit. So let's go out and test this bad boy with some fruit ninja, but I have one thing to get off my chest. This isn't just a normal weapons log video. This was actually sent to me by Karate Mart for phase two of their contest to see who will get to host their show, Weapons Wednesday. So it'd be really cool if you guys could tune into their channel and help vote for me. Now that that's off my chest, let's play some Fruit Ninja. Starting off with my first swing, it's pretty solid, but I don't have the blade alignment quite right on my first try, so it ends up just knocking the pumpkin off the stand. And then it's Bobby's first swing. His first swing is much better than mine simply because he has actual training with this weapon unlike I do. And so his first swing does cut a chunk off just like I, just like mine did as you see in this picture here. Then Bobby really comes into his own and gives it his second swing and truly cuts it clean in half as you see in the video right here because he's able to get the alignment correctly. And so I give it my go, Bobby lights it and I swing cutting it almost in half. So I ended up cutting it like it was a clean cut, but I just didn't reach far enough in. So we're gonna try again. And so I take one more chance out and completely finish it by cutting the pumpkin clean in yeah, half. And now we're leaves with a bunch of pumpkin bits on the ground. And now we have a super cut of all the cool different cuts that we did with flying fruit in the air. Perfectly in half. It's like he's a ninja. Almost a ninja, a modern ninja. Oh my God. Now I know what you're thinking. DJ, I wanna play Fruit Ninja too, how do I get one? And I got you guys. Just click the Karate Mart link down in the bio below and get one for yourself. And like I said earlier, I'd really appreciate you going to check out their YouTube channel to vote for me. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. And Bruce Lee, flow like water, state of mind, got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. Out here flashing change while your boy been in the gym, watch me spitting flames. What a frog. That was really cool. Great job, DJ. And that brings us to our final weapon of the day, which is the Stainless Steel Spear Staff, which is reviewed by Dallas Dyer. Now this is one of my favorite weapons of all time, so I'm very excited to see how Dallas reviews it. So let's go ahead and watch his video. Oh, oh man, oh man. Guys, I am so excited to make this video today. I am like so excited. Okay, so um, for those who don't know, this is my final audition video 
for um, Weapons Wednesday on CardioMart.com. For those who don't know who that is, um, CardioMart.com is like a, a website where you can buy like martial arts weapons, things like that, swords, staff, spears, nunchucks, anything you want. So um, they need a host for Weapons Wednesday to review their weapons. And I've been auditioning for quite some time along with a bunch of other people. And today I'm going to be in the finals. So I'm making my last audition video for their show. So um, before I wanted to get into that, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, if you guys um, like this video, you know, you can go over to KarateMart.com's YouTube channel and, you know, you can uh, support me on there if you want to. If you, if you feel like I'm fit for the role and even if I don't win, even if I don't win, I still, this has been like one of the greatest opportunities in my life. I mean, this is so awesome. I've um, loved Karate Mart for a long time. I've bought all kinds of weapons on there. And to get the opportunity to like be the host of their YouTube channel is so cool to me. All the nice things people are saying about me, it's, I've never had this many nice things said about me before in my life. So this is just so awesome. All right, so um, to get into this review, Karate Mart has actually sent me a weapon to review for this final video. So um, Tony, if you could just hand me that box there. Sure thing, Dallas. Here you go. Thank you so much, Tony. All right, so um, I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I have no idea what this weapon is. I have no idea what they sent me, but this is a really heavy weapon. It's definitely some sort of um, pole arm or like spear weapon or something like that. I have no idea what to expect. So let's get this open and see what they sent me. I am so excited. To All right, let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. I've got my knife here. Okay, like, I guess I'm trying to guess what this is. I'm thinking it's some sort of spear weapon or like a bow staff or something like that. I don't know, but uh, let's see if I can get this open. Okay, don't want to get too hard into it. Okay, just take it off. <sighs> get open one second. Okay, finally got it open. All right, All right let's open it up and see what we got. <clears throat> well, I thought I had it. We got moment of truth. It's stuck. It won't come out. <laughs> it's stuck. Get out of there. It's stuck. Oh, it's got like paper towels stuffed in there. Maybe that's why it won't come out. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my gosh. No freaking way. It's the freaking spear staff! <laughs> oh my gosh! They sent me the spear staff! <laughs> Yo! I did not expect that! Dude! Oh my gosh! Thank you guys so much! Yo! Oh my gosh, this is the stainless steel spear staff! <laughs> I did not expect this! But this is a um, a fully stainless steel spear staff. Um, it's got um, some machine lines in there. Um, some up here. It's got very very sharp pointed tips on both sides. This is like so awesome. Um, what this mostly reminds me of is um, Shredder's uh, um, spear staff thing in the TMNT 1990 movie. Um, that's why I like this thing so much because it reminds me of Shredder's weapon. But this. Oh, oh. Um, I'll fix that later. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, I'm gonna have to test this outside. I don't wanna put another hole in my wall. <laughs> okay, so I've read a little bit more about this uh, staff, and apparently it's uh, three pounds and 13 ounces. These staffs are available in, uh, I think, three foot, five foot, and six foot. They sent me a five foot one, so that's really, really cool. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. I'm just like really excited. I did not expect this. But still, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited to try this thing out. And I was right about it. It is a um, hollow aluminum. It's a really thick walled, I mean, sorry, not aluminum. Uh, stainless steel so it's a very thick walled hollow stainless steel so this should be pretty durable and I, I'm pretty confident I can like hit this against something really good and it won't break on me so I'm ready to go try it on something already all right guys so we're finally outside now and we're gonna be testing this weapon on some things so um the main three things I'm gonna be looking for in this weapon is its piercing power its whacking power and its durability um, I'm pretty confident it's going to get all those pretty good because um, we got some very sharp tips on there. And this feels like a very sturdy, well-made weapon. It's made here in the USA. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is gonna hold up pretty well. So let's try it on some things. Okay, so our first test subject we have here is Benjamin the skeleton. So we're gonna be putting this paw on top of Benjamin's head to see if these things could actually be used as um, protective helmets. I've always wanted to do that, so we're gonna find out today. Hey, hey, hey Dallas, can I make a skeleton pun real quick? Benjamin, we don't have time for skeleton puns, no. Okay, okay, what is a skeleton's favorite snack? What, Benjamin? Ribs! Spare ribs! <laughs> I'm dead! <laughs> Yeah, Benjamin, that was funny the first 500 times you told me that this week. All right, let's put this on your head. There we go. Hey, I can't see a thing in here. How can you see anyway? You're a skeleton. You don't have eyes. All right, all right the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, so I, it actually pierced right through there. I mean, it didn't go all the way through, but like it, it still pierced through the metal. And is there any visible damage to the spike? It still held up really nice. All right, let's try its whacking power. All right, now we're gonna give it a good whack. And it put a really, really good dent in that. So this thing does hold up very well and it does do a lot of damage. But there's still one... Right, let's just so over there for now. There's one more test I want to do and that's on a bloody watermelon. Okay, so sorry, there's one more test I want to do, and that's the throwing test. Can I punch? Huh? Can I fight me? That was loud. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I must say, I am incredibly impressed with the stainless steel spear staff. Um, it held up very nice, it's very sharp, very powerful, and it's basically just like wielding a, an extremely dangerous bow staff. We uh, hang it up on a wall somewhere, and you know, I just, I love this thing. It's so, it's so awesome. So um, thank you, Kyle, Amanda, whoever um, idea this was to send this, and <clears throat> Hope everyone has a great day. And don't forget to go over to cardamart.com, check out their website, check out their YouTube channel. Um, if you feel like I'm fit for the uh, the Roll of Weapons Wednesday host, uh, vote for me on there. And yeah, I'll see y'all. Great job, Dallas. That was fun to see. And now that you've seen all the contestants, I need you guys to go to the community tab and vote for which one you like best. And if you're having any trouble finding the community tab, I've added a link to the video description that will take you right to it. And as I've mentioned before, Amanda and I are still gonna be doing the videos regularly, but it's really gonna be nice to have an additional host to help us out. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out KarateMart.com because we've got all sorts of awesome weapons on there right now. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.